その日サッカーを志す者なら誰もが憧れるバルセロナのカンプノースタジアムのピッチに僕らは立っていた。そこで僕らは僕らにしかできないサッカーで世界を震撼させようとしたんだ After his team was disbanded, Ota Sho is a sixth grader determined on finding new players to reassemble the Momoyama Predators. Despite not being very good himself, he loves soccer with all his heart. He one day wishes to accomplish his candid dream of becoming a professional player. He is charming, cool, athletic, a good cook, but more importantly, he's a clean freak. Aoyama is idolized and respected by everyone, but they can only admire him from afar due to his misophobia. Despite that, he plays soccer, a rather dirty sport. As a playmaker for Fujimi High School soccer club, Aoyama avoids physical contact at all costs and clearly dribbles towards victory. However, the path to nationals will not be easy for Fujimi's underdog team. But alongside striker Kaoru Zaizen, Aoyama will show everyone that even as a clean freak, there are things he's willing to get dirty for. Kakeru and Suguru are brothers who both have a flaming passion for soccer. However, while Suguru becomes a rising star in a Japanese youth soccer system, Kakeru decides to take on a managerial role after struggling on the field. But due to a cruel twist of fate, Kakeru ends up reevaluating the role he has chosen. In hopes of one day being able to enter the World Cup by becoming a member of the national team, Kakeru trains harder than anyone else. He isn't alone in this quest for glory though. Kakeru's childhood friend Nana is a soccer prodigy of her own with a wicked name Little Witch. She's a top ranked player and is already playing for Nadeshiko Japan, the Japanese women's national team. Nana's success gives Kakeru the extra push he needs to reach for his goals. <laughs> This story is about a boy named Tsukamoto who is physically weak yet mentally strong. On the first day of school, he gets invited by his classmate Kazama to a soccer match at night. While playing the game, Kazama finds a hidden potential within Tsukamoto. Watch him as he unravels his abilities to become an outstanding cheerleading runner. This anime teaches us not to give up no matter what, to not blame ourselves just because it didn't work out. You can call yourself a loser when you have the ability to change it if you put your hardest on the line. That is what it means to live. Kyosuke Kano has lived under the shadow of his successful brother Sesuke, who is a professional soccer player, all his life. Tired of being compared to and looked down upon, he abandoned playing soccer. That is, until a boy from his new high school discovered him and asked him to join their team. Kyosuke joins the team and befriends two other first year players named Rodrigo and Sakai, with the dream of becoming professional soccer players themselves. Captain Tsubasa is a passionate story of an elementary school student whose thoughts and dreams revolve almost entirely around the love of soccer. 11 years old Tsubasa Ozora started playing football at a very young age and while it was mostly just a recreational sport for his friends, for him it developed into something of an obsession. In order to pursue his dream to the best of his elementary school's abilities, Tsubasa moves with his mother to Nankatsu City, which is well known for his excellent elementary school soccer teams. 
but although he was easily the best in his old town, Nankatsu has a lot more competition and he will need all of his skill and talent in order to stand out from this new crowd. He encounters not only rivals, but also new friends like the pretty girl Sana and Akazawa and the talented goalkeeper Genzo Wakabayashi, who shares the same passion as Tsubasa and will prove to be a treasured friend in helping him push towards his dreams. Representing Japan in the FIFA World Cup is Tsubasa's ultimate dream, but it will take a lot more than talent to reach it. Yoi! Hey! <laughs> East Tokyo United, or ETU, has been struggling in Japan's top soccer league for the past few years. It has taken everything they have just to avoid relegation. To make matters even worse, the team has lost 5 matches in a row, leading to abysmal team morale. Even the fans are beginning to abandon them, and rumors hint that the home ground municipality is going to withdraw their support. With countless coaches fired and poor financial choices in hiring players, it is a downward spiral for ETU. The board of directors, under pressure from general manager Kosei Goto, takes a gamble and hires a new coach, the slightly eccentric Takeshi Tatsumi. Though considered a great soccer player when he was younger, Tatsumi abandoned ETU years ago. However, since then he has proven himself successful as the manager of one of England's lower division amateur teams. Tatsumi's task won't be easy. ETU fans call him a traitor and the team is pitted against others with larger budgets and better players. Yet even the underdog can take down a Goliath, and Tatsumi claims he's an expert at giant killing. <laughs> While other schools in Japan compete for the title of being the best soccer team in the country, Ryman Middle School Soccer Club Inazuma 11 struggles to rise from the verge of being disbanded. The grandson of Inazuma's 11th first generation goalkeeper and captain of the team, Mamoru Endo, takes the challenge of kicking the long neglected club back into shape. To do this, he'll need a little help and more than a little luck. Mamoru Endo finds hope in the hands of Shuya Goenji, a brilliant young player who has given up on soccer. Mamoru is determined to get Shuya and other new recruits to join his team no matter what the cost. Is his passion and determination enough to treat the ailing club? Or is there no more hope for the team? In a quiet rural town, the spotlight of a local junior high school football team rests on one player, Ashito Aoi. Known for his unpredictable moves and self-centered playing style, Ashito is the sole powerhouse pushing his team through an important high school preliminary tournament. However, their win streak is short-lived. An opponent causes Ashito to lose his temper and act violently, resulting in his removal from the rest of the game. Without their star player, the team is quickly eliminated from the tournament. Just as he believes all hope is lost, Ashito is approached by a youth team coach named Tatsuya Fukuda, who senses potential in him and invites him for tryouts in Tokyo. In an unfamiliar setting surrounded by talent, Ashito must bring out the best of his ability to prove himself and secure what could be a life-changing career. Yoichi Isagi was mere moments away from scoring a goal that would have sent his high school soccer team to the nationals, but a split second decision to pass the ball to his teammate cost him that reality. Bitter, confused and disappointed, Isagi wonders if the outcome would have been different had he not made the pass. When the young striker returns home, an invitation from the Japan Football Union awaits him. Through an arbitrary and biased decision-making process, Isagi is one of the 300 U18 strikers selected for a controversial project named Blue Lock. 
The project's ultimate goal is to turn one of the selected players into the star striker for the Japanese national team. To find the best participant, each diamond in the rough must compete against others through a series of solo and team competitions to rise to the top. Putting aside his ethical objections to the project, Isagi feels compelled to fight his way to the top even if it means ruthlessly crushing the dreams of 299 aspiring young strikers.